seconds away on Studio 5. Or in my shelf. Comedian Kim Whitley's unscripted journey from mentor to motherhood. My whole life, that people don't know because I'm so crazy, my whole life, I believe, is by divine order. Plus. So I believed in open marriage. I just forgot to tell my ex-wife about it. <laughs> What's the price of making Christianity popular? We're tackling the question in our Let's Talk About It segment. And dancing with Demetria. Can we? It's a performance you have to see in this edition of Studio 5, and it starts now. And welcome to the show. Thank you so much for your company. Before we get to Kim's story, let's get a wrap of this week's biggest headlines in the world of inspiring entertainment news. This is this week's Top 5 from Studio 5. Pokemon Go comes in at number 5. Pikachu! It's the smartphone sensation taking the world by storm. From disrupting State Department meetings, you're playing the Pokemon thing right there, aren't you? Did you get one? No, no the signal's not very good. I'm sorry about that. To viral Pokemon sermons. Yo, you buying Pokemon, but have you poked Amon and invited him to church? New twists to the Pokemon Go craze keep popping up. The latest church signs like these on the street and on social media. From Jesus died to catch them all to Three poke stops here. Jesus loves gamers too. Can you believe in At number four, and fresh from receiving her star on the Hollywood Walk of Fame, Pastor Shirley Caesar is inviting everyone to church. Her church. I have a lot of my friends coming. Um, Donna McClurkin is going to open it up for me on the first. Bishop Hezekiah Walker a singer and preacher personified. He's going to be preaching the next night. Pastor Caesar's free week-long conference begins August 1st and includes appearances from actress and singer Jennifer Holliday and recording artist Jonathan McReynolds. On now to number three. This is gonna be quite the adventure. Morgan Freeman returns to the National Geographic Channel for a second season of The Story of God the network's most watched series of all time. Who is God? I believe God is our father, the creator, somebody that gives us purpose and destiny. Season two will air in early 2017 on network channels in 171 countries and in 45 languages. On now to number two. I'm here, I'm on, I'm going. I'm here, let's go. The violent and deadly tension between police and civilians has more celebrities calling for peace and justice. Basketball legend Michael Jordan issued a statement to ESPN's Undefeated saying, I can no longer stay silent. MJ, who lost his own father to violence, also donated a million dollars to a police organization and a million dollars to the NAACP. Rapper 50 Cent also broke his silence in this interview with Studio 5. What do you think your, your elders and your families would say? Well, I've been quiet because I didn't have a solution for it. So I think the, some of the people that are protesting and are really passionate about it should actually become police officers. Mm -hmm. And at number one, Pastor Tim LaHaye. Remember, it was less than 2,000 years ago that Jesus said, I go to prepare a place for you. The co-author of the best-selling Left Behind book series died at the age of 90, just days after suffering a stroke. His popular books also became popular movies. I know you all want answers, and believe me, so do I, and I'll do my best to get them. Time Magazine once called LaHaye one of the 25 most influential evangelicals in America. And those are your top five from Studio 5. She's an actress and a comedian who has appeared in numerous films and television shows. But Kim Whitley said her proudest role is one that only God could have prepared her to handle. 
and she hopes her life will inspire others to do more to help what Jesus calls the least of these. In today's interview, I'm talking with the actress about how she became a mother in only one hour. Los Angeles is home to nearly four million people. A good number of them came with dreams of making it big in Hollywood. May I remind you that I told you to go tell Gabby how you feel. Actress and comedian Kim Whitley shared those dreams. I knew I was funny the first time I got a check. The first time I got paid for it, I was like, I must be funny. That confidence came early. Kim's parents encouraged it, and she took it with her after she graduated from college and moved to Tinseltown with only $50 to her name. It's taken years to land more than 40 film and 40 television appearances. But Kim doesn't call it hard. What's hard? I look at other people's lives, their life. That might be hard. For me, if I want to be the spoiled brat, no, oh, yeah, me trying to make it. Ooh, so what I had to get on food stamps for a minute. So what I had to do some jobs I didn't, wasn't comfortable with. No, no, it wasn't hard. Um, I believe it's part of my journey. Her Hollywood journey began as a substitute teacher in Compton. As I was teaching, I would find one student or two students, the parents would say, hey, can you teach my child how to read over the summer? This, my little girl, she's out of hand. She's not listening to me. I don't know where she's gonna end up. And then I would take that little girl. So it started then. Kim's mentoring days took an unexpected turn a few years ago when her phone rang. There was a hospital nurse on the other end. And within just one hour of that phone call, the comedian went from mentor to mother. One girl in particular I've been mentoring for maybe 15 years, and she had gone into the hospital to deliver a baby. And the social worker says, the birth mother has chosen you as the guardian for this baby. When that opportunity came, I was fearful and I had chills all over my body. I was like, I can't take a kid. I mean, I could take a puppy, but not a kid. But my parents were in town. And my mom and dad literally were like, okay, baby girl, why don't you go get this baby? This is truly your last chance at happiness. What? No, they were like, you don't have a man. You don't, it doesn't look like you got one coming. Your, your eggs is old, boo. You better go get this baby. This is crazy. This is the baby. Home video documents Joshua's arrival. Unexpected, but no accident. And I tell you this, the reason why this was divine, one of many reasons was, he came at a time when my parents were in town. They're never in Los Angeles. They were there for a period of two weeks. They've never stayed past a week. Then they said, we'll stay for a month. Then they stayed for three months because they were worried I was going to kill the baby. <laughs> Okay, I didn't know how to bathe the baby or change the diaper, so they stayed with me. But six months later, my mother passed. How could that be planned? The time I spent with my mother and this baby? Kim's unscripted journey from mentor to motherhood. Or in my side. You get one shelf. Is the subject of a hit reality television series called Raising Whitley on Oprah Winfrey's network. It's a little lumpy. What's wrong? No, pancakes are supposed to be lumpy. If I'm gonna put my life and my son's life out for public display, it has to be to help people. So that was the decision, that I was safe and this would be a show that will help and bring laughter and hopefully some lessons. Lessons from a life Kim never really imagined and a son like bad guys. Okay. Kim can't imagine living without. I don't know how all this happened. It was supposed to happen. Um, from charity work to a child to a great show, great career. I divine order. <laughs> and you can catch Kim Whitley in the new season of Young and Hungry on Freeform. Still to come. Here on Studio 5. You made the earth, it was formless and void. Dancing with Demetrius Stallings. It's a Studio 5 performance you're sure to enjoy. 
and welcome back to Studio 5. I'm joined now by recording artist and personal friend Demetria Stalling. She is here to perform her song, Can We Just Dance? It is so beautiful. Tell me, what inspired this song? You know, it's a long, it's a longer story, but I want to make it short. Is I was at Regent University and I had a lot of decisions to make, a lot of things that I had to do, and so much pressure. And I was just like, God, I just don't feel like I have direction with my life. Where am I going? What's going to happen? You know, um, what I was studying. But it was just him and I. Mm. So I was like can you dance with me? Because if you dance with me, I know everything else will come um, together. And so that came to me and then it just unfolded to a song. So yeah. Beautiful. Well, the timing is perfect as we are many overwhelmed. Yeah. So Demetria, take it away. Beautiful, beautiful. Don't we wish we could sing like that? So beautiful. <laughs> that song is available on her album, Letters of the Heart. You can purchase that at CBN.com, iTunes, and all things digital. Go ahead, keep dancing. Dance out of your <laughs> shoes. Thank you so much. Thank you, Ephraim. Next on Studio 5, is the church's voice missing from the critical issues of our day? We, America, we need to do a lot of soul searching a lot of soul searching. We're talking about it when Studio 5 continues. And we are back with a new Studio 5 segment called Let's Talk About It. I'll be joined by a panel of guests in a second and we're asking the question, has Christianity lost its relevance in today's culture? From NBA star Steph Curry to comedian Jim Gaffigan to hip hop artist Lecrae, some would say their popularity and willingness to publicly share their faith is making Christianity cool. And it's not just celebrities seeing a bigger platform for their faith. The challenge is on to write a new record. Taylor's got a song. Jesus. All right, so we got that, Jesus would do. Pure Flix Film is bringing Hillsong's highly anticipated feature film to theaters this fall. We're headed into Sony Studios. I guess this would be 11 albums. We're the biggest band you've never heard of. <laughs> Potter's House pastor Bishop T.D. Jakes has a daytime talk show in the works. And 
Let us have a great day. Give hope and healing to everybody yes. watching. In your name we pray. Amen. Amen. The Fox Television Network is giving a summer test run to The Preachers. This daytime talk show features a panel of four popular megachurch pastors. Let go of what you think a preacher is. If you've been hurt by preachers or by church, lay that down and get to know us as men, as husbands, as fathers, and hear our hearts on a various Absolutely. array of subjects. But some are now asking exactly what's the price of making our faith popular? Here's a subject that I thought my fellow preachers would find very interesting. Uh, the two of you have a podcast called Monique and Sydney's Open Relationship. I think, I think that's amazing. Uh, and a lot of people think that that's novel and y'all church people are going to have a heart attack. Monique is from Baltimore with me. So I believed in open marriage. I just forgot to tell my ex-wife about it. <laughs> hmm. So then there's the question. Is the church choosing to be popular over being relevant? And is its voice missing from the recent outcries in critical issues like racism, police brutality, and violence against police officers? We, America, we need to do a lot of soul searching, a lot of soul searching. And I, I also believe sin is at the root of it. And perhaps numbers help to tell the story. A LifeWay research survey found 63% of the country feel Christians are facing growing levels of persecution for their faith. But at the same time, a growing number of people feel Christians complain too much about how they're treated. That number has risen from 34% in 2013 to 43% in 2015. So let's talk about it. Today I'm joined by Pastor Linda Salzman, Stephen Spruill, a photojournalist and aspiring filmmaker, and you know Demetria Stallings, who joins us now. You already met her in the show. Thank you all for being here. Tonight. We want to talk about it. Let's begin with, I think, probably the most glaring piece of that story, the joke about um, an open marriage. Your thoughts as a pastor, two pastors, interviewing a couple who have an open marriage and making jokes about it. I believe that the church can be relevant, but if we lose our salt, if we, if we lose our flavor, the, the word tells us if salt doesn't have flavor anymore, then what good is it? I was shocked mm. by the statement and okay, you're joking, but when do we really say, um, would Christ, would God himself be pleased with what's coming mm -hmm. out of my mouth? And so I think you can be yourself with not losing, yes. you know, your salt. Looking for a church, Stephen, as a young person, what would you say you're looking for? What, what would you, what are your measurements? How would we attract you? Um, I think I'm probably opposite what most millennials want. Mm. I'm not attracted to big flashy production churches. I really actually hate that. Mm. I just feel like being challenged in my faith is a lot better for me. It makes me think after the sermon. Mm -hmm. And a lot of these churches, I don't know, it feels like they're putting on a show to get people in. Do you think that the church, especially leadership, has dumbed down the message in hopes of reaching more people? And we're hearing someone like Stephen say, I, I want deeper. I believe so in some, in some churches. That's a sad thing to say, but it's, it's the truth. And I believe exactly what, I love what he said, that he doesn't go for something big and flashy. People can smell phony. Yeah. Mm. They really can't. Fake and phony. And they see this watered down gospel or they see one minister saying one thing and another one saying another thing and they absolutely don't line up. What would you say the prescription is for the church becoming more relevant um, and not at the expense of popularity? I personally, I think every leader, every pastor needs to get back to a place if they're not there or continue, I should say, um, where, Lord, would you guide us? If each of you could take a quick second, if you could give the body of Christ a grade on how it's doing with reaching the lost, what would that grade be and why? I have to be perfectly honest. For me, I would say a C minus. Wow. And I'm sorry, but you know, I have to tell you the truth. And the reason for that is exactly what we've been talking about a little bit. It seems like a lot of churches now are, are more interested in a bless me club and too much. We just come together. Yes, of course we need to do that. Yes, we need to be strengthened and encouraged. 
but we also need to be making a difference outside of the church walls. I give myself an F. I mean, I probably am more caught up in like my own, as a young guy, um, my career ambitions and where I want to go with my life. I kind of agree with both of them, but I also think of the church also in different countries and different, you know, because I know a lot of missionaries and I, I would say knowing them and seeing that I would give, like, I would say a B plus in the sense of as a whole, mm -hmm. um, because there are people that are going out and spreading the gospel and sharing and um, teaching others what, globally, mm -hmm. you know, and so I would say a B plus, and I think there are some areas that we all can grow. And we are out of time, but we yes. want to keep the conversation going. So make sure you log on to my Facebook page at Ephraim Graham and tell me what you want to talk about when we sit down to Let's Talk About It next time. Still to come on Studio 5. I think people are too emotional. A great word from a great storyteller. And a look ahead to a Studio 5 episode with a rocking twist. It's time now to look ahead. We'll be rocking out for next week's Studio 5. Christian heavy metal band Silent Planet is topping the Billboard charts. It's definitely kind of nerve-wracking when you put out an album. We head to the summer's largest music tour, Warp Tour, to hear from the lead singer. I'm here because I love Jesus and because Jesus has uh, transformed my life. And that's next week. I'm giving today's final word to a new friend of Studio 5, Brandon Ricks. He's a husband, a father of three, and a filmmaker. He works with the ministry I Am Second. It uses the gift of storytelling to speak to the struggles people are facing today. Brandon has a message from the heart that is so needed. Don't just feel, think. Feelings are not meant to make decisions from. Feelings are meant to connect you to others and to give you empathy and compassion, but they're not meant to make decisions from. When you actually make decisions, it comes from, that comes from your intellect and your logic and your reason. And if you're a believer, it should come from the Holy Spirit's guidance and direction in your life. And if the Holy Spirit is giving you wisdom and discernment, then you should be able to make right choices. Responding in a way that pleases our Father, it should be a desire for us all. And that is the final word for this show. Until next time, be sure to reach out and touch me at Ephraim Graham on Instagram, Facebook, Twitter, and Snapchat. And then come on back and see where Studio 5 takes you next week.